I did it. I got it done using a, a phone card so that you couldn't trace it back to Scientology. And I gave him the address. And I said, what are you doing with this shit? And he said, I can't, I can't tell you. If I tell you, they'll get you in deposition, and you'll be in deposition forever, which is what Scientology really does to their critics. Huh. But I didn't know that. Okay. So then how did you so make once, your... Oh, once, so once I started opening up these phony accounts... It, they started acting more and more mafia-like. I'll just put it in a nutshell. I'm from Chicago. I grew up around the mafia, and I started thinking, wait a minute. This is, I wouldn't put it past David Miscavige, who runs the Church of Scientology, to hire a mafia guy to start wiping out these critics. And I know it sounds stupid, but it honestly was what I thought. And so I thought, I've got to go look on the Internet and see what they're doing. And the day that I looked, and back then, they didn't. It wasn't the internet is nothing like what it was. I mean, what it is now. Yeah. Back then, it was just one little news group called Alt Religion Scientology, and it was just linear. Like somebody'd make a post, and then another post, and each post would drive down the top post, right? So their goal was to drive all the hot topic posts about Hubbard, Miscavige, the church, down to the bottom of the page and onto the second page because they felt like nobody read the second page, which isn't too altogether false, right? right? Yeah. So I go to look on the Internet, and the day that I looked, it was all baking recipes, and in between it, it says, I didn't say that Scientology changed my words. And I realized, oh, my God, these accounts that I'm opening to, quote, unquote, help my church are actually stopping free speech. And now I'm totally terrified. Because I realize this is coming from probably David Miscavige on down. It's really bigger than I thought. It's really spooky. i got to get out. So I call up Bill Yachty and I say, hi, you know, I've got to go back to work. I've got to start making money again. Can't keep doing this. He goes, okay, no problem. Just meet us in this apartment in Glendale at 7 o'clock. I say, okay. So I drive over there. I'm still very innocent, thinking, okay, it's all going to work out. I'll just stop opening these phony accounts, right? I walk in, wrong. It's all men. It's dark. They're big men. They're people I know. They're all at the top of the bridge. Think of the bridge as a triangle. They're all way at the very tippy top of the triangle. The bridge is I the uh, path to knowledge in Scientology. Pardon I'm just, me? I'm just letting listeners know the bridge is the path to spiritual knowledge in Scientology. That these are the top right. members. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, so they're way at the top, mm -hmm. and they normally they're all like, Tori, hi, you know, big hug, everything. And tonight I walk in, and they're like, hello, hello, hello. It's very weird. And the, the lights are very dim, and I'm mm. thinking, this is very spooky. It's all men and me. And Bill wasn't there, who's my best friend. And all of a sudden the door swings open. Gavino, who was worked for the Sea Org, was in the Sea Org, and ran this whole show and was a skinny Italian guy that I thought was the mafia guy, comes pounding in with Yachty, and he says to Bill Yachty, I warned you about her, I warned you about her, and it was about a two-hour, I call it a spiritual rape. They just kept saying and asking me questions, and it was just awful. And I finally just burst out crying, ran out, and that was really the night I left Scientology. It took me another six months to actually wake up and leave, but that was really the make-break point. And I, and I thought to myself, I didn't get into Scientology to stop free speech. No way. Mm -hmm. Wow. So then, it almost, uh, uh, Pardon me? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just going to say, everyone who's out, they hit that same point. One way or the other. A door cracks open and they see, you know, they think it's all light, and it cracks open and they see the darkness. And they go, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. No way. You know what I mean? And that you, one for one, you can talk to people and find out their story. There was something in it that they didn't know, and they realized, and they went, "Okay, that's it. I'm done." They hit their breaking point. So, how did you actually escape? Like, how how did that go down? I was on the internet. I started making four thousand posts in four weeks in June. Not not for them, just for me to kind of. I felt like if I put myself in with the critics. Because Scientology was always sending me out to, quote, unquote, handle the critics. Mm -hmm. So I'd been around them a bunch. And I started liking them. 
and uh, and I started not liking Scientology. So I forget the name of the movie, but there's a movie where you're all everybody's in black and white, and as they wake up, they turn into color. Do you guys know the name yeah, of that movie? Pleasantville. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a really cool movie, Pleasantville. and that's how I felt. I felt like I was like a peacock. I was like in all these colors, and these other people were all in black and white. And so I'm kind of freaking out. I get on the internet. I make four thousand posts in four weeks thinking somebody's going to say something that will help me. And sure enough, Andreas Heldeland, who has Xenu.net, X-E-N-U.net, he's from Norway. He was never in Scientology, but he's a computer geek, and he started looking around on the Internet in the early 90s, and he, thought, he read Scientology shit, and then he looked around and he thought, wow, you know, there's all kinds of heavy-duty stuff, Paulette Cooper's stuff and the Guardian's office. These are all things you can Google and look up, and it's just unbelievable. Eleven people went to prison that were in the Guardian's office, including Mary Sue Hubbard, Hubbard's wife, wow. right? So it was a mess. But who I worked for were the Office of Special Affairs, which that's what the Guardian's office closed, and they created the Office of Special Affairs. And they told us, the public, this is just PR and legal. That's all it is. So that's what I thought. I was just helping in a PR way. That's it. Hmm. Okay. So. But anyway, Andreas asked me what kind of friends could those be if they're going to leave you because you changed your mind. That cracked open the Truman Show, and I woke up, and the, Stacey Brooks and Bob Minton and Jesse Prince, who had the Lisa McPherson Trust in Clearwater, Florida, helped me. They flew me to Clearwater, and that was it. I was out. Oh. Wow. Why? Why Clearwater? Lost because all my isn't uh... and my husband of twenty-seven years overnight. Wow! Wow! Now, why did you? Yeah. Why did you go to Florida? Because I, Clearwater, uh, at Tampa, St. Pete. That's also like a big hub for Scientology. There, isn't it? It is now, but back then there were only a few people that lived there, and I was terrified. You have to understand, I'm fifteen minutes away from the OSA headquarters, and I knew from what I knew, what I've told you today, they would come and get me. And, and locked me up, and I had no idea. I knew they'd killed Lisa McPherson. You can Google Lisa McPherson, I think yeah. it's dot .org, and see her whole thing. But I was really afraid for my life. And yeah. so Stacy said, and Bob said, look, we'll fly you here. Just come here and relax for, you know, a couple of weeks and figure out what you're going to do. So that was my plan, was just to kind of go there, meet them. I wasn't even sure if they were OSA or not. You know, it was like yeah. maybe they're just pretending because these guys that i was with were totally phonies at this point yeah. pretending about all kinds of stuff so i was really scared for my life so when she said look we'll fly you here i was like all right but then i called her back and said look i'm not going to pick up i'm not going to make videos i'm not going to speak out at all and she said i'm only doing for you what i wish someone had done for me when i left the seal i said okay deal and and what uh, what again is OSA? The Office of Special Affairs. They say it's PR and legal. Mm -hmm. They also run this kind of shit behind your back. Like Bill Yachty, to give you an idea, opened up ten different phony accounts and ran them on this one news group, pretending he was all kinds of different people. And I would watch him doing it. And it's like he would say... Let's say Carl posted something. L. Ron Hubbard's a liar. He would come on as Mary and say, Carl, you know, you know he isn't a liar. And nothing would happen. So then he would come on as Frank and say, oh, don't listen to her. She always says stuff like that. And he would just keep posting things until finally there was this huge clusterfuck of fighting. And then he would, he would jump, up to, he'd jump up and he'd light a cigarette and he'd go, bingo, we're done. And I'd say, what do you mean you're done? What are you done with? And he said, these people are going to be fighting for hours, if not weeks, if not months. Let's go to dinner. <laughs> so it's, that it's, was his product. It sounds like my Facebook wall. <laughs> well, I was going to say it sounds <laughs> like exactly what uh, the, the uh, Deputy Attorney General uh, announced indictments on Russia for doing in the last election. Yeah, exactly. basically. Rat fucking. A hundred percent. When that happened, I thought, <laughs> oh, my God, they learned from OSA. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, not that they, not that that. I'm but same technique, that, yeah. Not necessarily. It's so similar to the, what they did mm -hmm. social on the social network. That's exactly what 
Bill Yachty did, and I think he's still doing. I think they have a small crew of people. Most people don't know about it, but the people that do, I've watched them. I opened the accounts. I know it's happening. Now let let me ask you I mean, if if I may. I'm I'm sorry, um, but uh, I. I brought the politics into this. So I, I do want to continue because I had asked uh, someone else previously, you know, the, the current administration is uh, they, they are trying to launch uh, religious freedom laws, finger quotes implied heavily. Um, and I, I'm wondering because Scientology is known for being so litigious uh, as someone who's gotten out, are you, do you have any concerns that, they will use these, you know, religious freedom laws that uh, the administration is pushing to, you know, stomp out any opposing, you know, views to the theocracy. Uh, do you think that Scientology as an organization is is trying to figure out how they can use these laws to their advantage? This is Kevin, right? This um, is David, actually. <laughs> oh, David. Okay, good. Anyway, David... Absolutely, 100% I am concerned. They are starting all these phony civil rights groups that they, they act like they're the king and queen of civil rights. I mean, no one is violating civil rights that I know of personally worse than they are. Right. I mean, they have people locked up in a hole. Do you know what I mean? They, they have this sea org where there's a slave camp. You're not allowed to leave Scientology. It's a high crime to speak out. You can't call the police. It's against the law in Scientology to call the police. You know? Right? So they, they stop free speech. They break up families. They practice fair game. L. Ron Hubbard said, fair game, you can lie, cheat, steal, destroy someone utterly without any consequences. Now, they'll say it's canceled. I stood up in court and said to Margaret Singer, that is a lie. They do not do that. It's canceled. But when I got out, Stacy and Bob Minton showed me, Stacy Brooks, Bob Minton, showed me at the bottom of the cancellation, it says in little tiny letters, this cancellation does not apply to suppressive people. Oh. Wow. And the only people they're going to use fair game on are people they decided are suppressive. Have you encountered any harassment since you left? Are you kidding me? <laughs> of course I have. That was a softball. Tons. They have it up to this day. I mean, they, they, when I first left, now, now we have, thank goodness, Leah Remini, right? Mm -hmm. And the aftermath with Mike Rinder, who was their PR for years when I was in. I worked from underneath Mike Rinder. And, you know, it's like amazing to me that now... The, you know, these guys are out, and thank goodness, and they have tons of fans, and now the fans are starting to listen and go, wait a minute, what is this Scientology stuff? And David Miscavige, I really don't think, planned on Leah. He, you know, it's the same thing. Like, they should have known with me. I, and you can hear it. I, I, I'm not someone who sits in a corner and doesn't say anything. I have an opinion. I have a voice. And they should have known it. In 30 years, they did know it. <laughs> but they're too stupid to learn from it. <laughs> so, like Leah, Leah was going to write a book, which she did, Troublemaker. She was going to make her first series, eight eight interviews. That was it. She was on her way. But, oh, no, they had to put up websites against her, big lies against her, big lies against Mike, you know, just creepy, awful stuff. And you know what you do when that happens? You go, you know what? Fuck you. I'm on this. I, I told him that. When I started my YouTube site, Mark Bunker brought me a webcam. He said, this is from Anonymous. They had taken on the church in 2008. I made my first video with him saying Magoo has a YouTube site, Tory Magoo 44, T-O-R-Y Magoo 44, right? That was it. That was our first video. We got thousands of hits on it. Okay, second one, they're on my YouTube site, starting to pick me apart, say lies, say shit. So I make a video saying, you know what? I'm from Chicago, and here's my policy. You fuck me once, I'll fuck you twice. Every time. That's it. And that's what's happened. I'd get like, eh, I'm kind of sick of this, I'm done with it, and they'll come flatten my tires, right? Or do something Jeez. where, you know, it's just, just some kind of creepy stuff. So you go, okay, I'll keep talking. Yeah. You know, th that ticked me off. 
<laughs> short sheet your bed. And to this day, they have a, you can Google my name, Tori Christman, T O R Y, Christman, like Christ man. And most of it is good stuff that's my stuff. But you, they have their little religious freedom watch with all kinds of lies on it about me that are just.